Well, welcome, welcome back. It's Richard Ray Here we go again. It's actually 3.6. It's just a little bit more set for a long line. So, so in this section, we're not actually doing the whole section. We're only doing some of it. So, so your homework, if you're, you're, you're actually taking my class, your homework, homework is numbers 117, every other odd, that's what the E O O stands for. And then, and then number 35. So you don't, so you don't have, have to do it all here. Just be nice. nice. Give you a little break. break. All right. All right. So, so slow is our step four. Is y is equal to mx plus b. I have some I have the outlines of what all that is here on this board, and then we'll do some examples. So, so first, first of all, we, we need to know that x and y are the variables. Okay. And x and y are the variables, and they are going to stay in x and y in our equation. Okay. And when we're we'll writing write equations, they have to have x and y in them. And M is this little slope, and then B is our, our y-intercept. And, and so we'll see how this works here in just a minute, but remember, the y-intercept would be the place where the line or any graph, graph crosses the y-axis. So, so the, the nice thing about, about this form for the equation is you, you get the y-intercept for free. It's just, just sitting, sitting there at the end waiting for you to go, hey, oh, look, there's my y-intercept. And, and you also get the slope. And so, and so you watched watch watch my last video, video. at the very end, end I talked about graphing a line given, given a point and, and a slope. And so if you have your equation in this form where the y is by itself, you automatically get a point that that y-intercept for free. And, and then you have, have the slope, and so you can use that, that to, as, as directions, directions to rise and run to get to, get to another point. point. Two, two points, points makes, makes you align, and you're all set. All right, all right. So, so let's, let's jump, jump in and see some examples of what we have to do this. This, this isn't is a real long section, so it shouldn't should take too long. All right, here are our first two examples. We'll see one more example after this, but it'll be on the next board. So for this board, First, we want to write the equation of the line with slope negative two-thirds and y-intercept six. All we have to do is fill in the m and the b. Okay, we had that formula, that, that standard equation that we saw on the, last, on the last board, y is equal to mx plus b. We're just going to put in negative two-thirds in place of the m and six in place of the b. Done. Remember what we said on the last board, x and y are variables. So sometimes people want to put that 6 here where y is because, hey, it's a y, and you said the y-intercept is 6. Um, but remember, the x and y here are variables. b is the 6. The y-intercept is that number at the end. And that works really nice because, remember, a y-intercept is when x is 0. If you plug in 0 here for x, that whole part drops out, and the 6 is all that's left. So there you go. That's why it actually is the y-intercept. All right, so my, I just covered it up, but for my second example, moving over so you can see it. Find the slope and y-intercept. This time I have an equation. I just want you to pull out the slope and the y-intercept. Well, again, we know y is equal to mx plus b. m is 5 thirds. That's my slope. b is this time a minus 2. Watch out for the minus sign. So my y-intercept is negative 2. Done. One more example, and you'll have everything you need to work with this. All right, yeah, let me get a new board. Here we go, last example for this section, for this whole chapter even. Find the slope and y-intercept. 3x minus 4y is equal to 8. Now, if you've been paying attention through this particular video, you'll notice that doesn't look right. We said we we're working with y equals mx plus b. That doesn't look anything like that. So unfortunately, this is the hardest, about the hardest thing you're going to see in this whole section. We need to get y by itself first. You can see I've got it by itself down here. Uh, but we need to get y by itself first so that then we can take advantage of having the right form and we can just pull out the, the pieces that we need. So I have a 3x. I subtract it from both sides. I chose to put it in front of the 8, which is perfectly fine. As long as the 3x stays negative and the 8 stays positive, it's, it's perfectly legal. I then divided everything by the negative 4 because, again, I'm trying to get that y by itself. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 leaves me with 1, so I just have y. On the other side, we can divide both parts by negative 4, and that's how that actually works. So negative 3 divided by negative 4 simplifies to be a positive 3 quarters. And 8 divided by negative 4 gives me a minus 2. So now I can look at it and I can see that my slope is 3 fourths. My y-intercept is negative 2. 
And that's how it works. It works really nice, but you have to practice getting that Y by itself. So for some people, this is the weirdest bit that we do here in this particular section. They don't like it a whole lot. Just practice it and it'll really, I can talk really, just practice it and it will work itself out and you'll be okay. All right, so there you go. That's slope intercept form. Good luck.